Bonson Group CIO David Bonson. And it's hard to quantify, David, the, the impact of that, certainly near term, uh, which is really tough because the strong consumer, strong consumer confidence really is the way we've been riding. Yeah. If you view markets as a discounted flow of earnings and you lose your ability to measure earnings, it doesn't you can't put a multiple on you. You lose both of the numbers you're trying to multiply to get a fair value of the market. By the same token, though, the street is assuming a worst case scenario. In other words, no, we don't know what the E is, but they think it's going to be pretty low. That, that's right. And where and the financial crisis in the stock market sense ended is when they overshot so much as to how low the E would go that it just became unbelievably viable. It isn't necessarily there yet, but based on the information they have, it very well could be. Um, we, I mean, I, this, I've never seen a situation where the outcomes in the short term, by short term, I mean three to six months, are so diverse. We could be into a recession, and we literally could bounce back 30, 40 percent, no problem. As far as the economy, I agree completely, but there's an important point we want to make from history. There probably will be a V-shape at the very beginning of the stock market recovery and then a smoothing out. Right. It will, uh, you're not going to get back to 29000 right away, but I think half of the recovery will come quickly. That's what is so dangerous about market timing right now, because you can miss 40% of the recovery in a few days. Let me ask you about that, because uh, on, on, the, on, a, on the few up days that we've had, particularly the last uh, big day up, uh, the leaders were, were oil companies. And I know that you like the MLPs. And, uh, you know, if you see something like a, a Apache up 20 percent in a day, that's it's interesting until you find out it's still down 50 percent for the year. Right. That kind of thing. So we will get an initial snapback. But what keeps these hard hit areas to continue to rally? Like, why would I be in oil other than for a snapback trade? You wouldn't want to be in anything other than the highest quality names. If you're on the production side, Exxons and Chevrons. If you're on the MLP side, meaning transportation, enterprise products, EPD. Those types of names that have you can lock in generationally high yields from companies that are in a far better place. The Apaches, Occidental, you saw what happened there. Uh, these kinds of names that are far more levered, they just simply have to be avoided. Their economics have blown up. What about, real quick, I want to ask you something about the Fed, but since you're on this, the Pioneer, Concho, mm -hmm. Permian Basin place, I feel like they're going to get a bailout eventually, not in this first uh, intervention because it would be political suicide, but I think the argument that they're so valuable to us as security, you know, not sending money to a foreign country, controlling our own interests, uh, and also Texas being a pretty important election state. Do you see that happening? Um, I don't. I was in the West Wing on Wednesday. I had some meetings with the National Economic Council. Uh, it's not to say that it can't end up going there, but I think everyone's aware it'd be politically awful. It is unnecessary. We have a bailout right now in our country. It's called private equity. Everyone's talking about all their dry powder. There are assets there. Markets will work for the weaker players in the Permian Basin.